hamburger. Hey! Yeah. What do you think you're doing? A sentient burger. Work for me and we can rule the world together. Oh, you don't know me very well. I'm my own boss. <laughs> Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Review. Ooh, I don't know what I'm doing. Today, let's take a look at the Hasbro Marvel Legends Deluxe MODOK. Am I a little late with this? Yeah, I am. I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't gonna buy this. I'm perfectly happy with my old potato head Toy Biz MODOK in all its ugly glory but it was in stock on the Disney store. I wanted other things and needed something to push it up to free shipping. I'm one of those buyers. I saved myself five dollars, but I spent an extra fifty. <laughs> <laughs> but then Disney took forever to ship, and the post office didn't tell me the box was there, and it, it was all kinds of craziness. I'm coming back around, gonna open this up because one, it's Marvel Legends, and two, I've watched half the Modoc show, and I, I got into it. It hits you weird once you get part way into it. Looking at the box, I thought there would be a flap or something to let you see the figure inside, but there's not. It's just this picture on front, which is cool. You see what you're getting in picture form and they have to point out that this is a fantasy scene, that it doesn't actually come with a laboratory for, yeah, whatever. Warning, choking hazard, small parts. Don't put this big headed bastard in your mouth. On the side, some nice art of Modoc. On the back, more of what you're getting. They give an actual size since you can't see it in the package. More warnings, one figure, four accessories. On the other side, that same MODOK art. On top, some kind of MODOK logo. On bottom, legalese. There's the Disney store, 50 bucks. But let's get this open. See what's going on here. I don't know why I felt the need to center that. Because you don't care, you just want to see what's inside. I want to see what's inside. This is just the trash around my plastic. Some assembly required. Is there a warning for that on here? Oh, no, the legs aren't even on it. There doesn't seem to be any kind of instructions. Don't put it in your mouth. Get out of there, brain pan. Okay, here's all the pieces separate. I'm guessing the legs go on the hips. Right foot, right leg, right side. Hmm, how about the left? Is it easy to put on? Hell no. Bring forth the heat gun. Soften it up just a little bit, allowed it to pop on. I just realized he came out of the package like, <laughs> butter. I'm guessing that goes there. Okay, I didn't have to heat that up, but it was kind of tough to push in. And then that goes there. Slips into there. This goes here. And then this... Oh, wait a second. Yeah, there's a lip right here that goes under those. So you gotta put the hair on first and then pop this on. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's how you go. And getting it all together, <laughs> it's kind of hard to get in my camera angle, but I think I like it better than the old one. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. I know not everybody is a fan of the swirly twirly plastic, the marbleized look, but I love it. It's comic booky. It's kind of ethereal. It's something to kind of stare at and go, oh, do that. And the overall look of the figure is more Hasbro-ish. I, I, it fits into the current aesthetic. There's definitely a difference in styles. Undeniably Toy Biz. It has the heavy wash. It has the intricate sculpt. That this isn't shabby in the sculpt department and even the paint, really. If these were just thrown out in front of you and you had no prior knowledge, you'd go, yep, Toy Biz, Hasbro. Quite the size difference too. Not so much, well, yeah, in, overall. Even they did some swirly twirly, but it has more shading to it. But that's okay, because it's Toy Biz. Hasbro does it and oh. I like the sculpt. It's kind of a more modern rendition of MODOK, but it also keeps a Kirby feel to it with the design work coming around the chair or body or encompassing thing. Nice crisp sculpting with, it has some wash down in there, some paint. Kind of a different color coming around the headband or well, the back of the head. And then there's that logo that I guess is from the comics. But my first time seeing the honeycomb hideout symbol was over on the Super Villains Wave, Scientist Supreme. So it's nice they got that in there together. I don't know if this is coming across blue on camera, and through the viewfinder it is, but this is definitely purple. There's no mistaking it. The arms, the legs, the headband around the top, again with that Kirby-esque design work. Love this. The green on top of this shiny black, it just adds something else to look at in the overall piece. Same with these two red buttons. The control stick has some glossy black to it, a little red for the trigger, and that ties back up to the red up here. Even though this has kind of a pink glow in the middle of it. I know it's just paintwork, but 
if you look at it without all the bright lights and stuff, it has a glowy look to it. The hair up on top, nicely sculpted, and even that has some wash to it with the darker browns down in the grooves, the lighter brown dry brush on top. The bottom of the chair is a slightly darker gold. It's just a darker plastic, and when I had it all apart, I thought, oh, that's just gonna clash, but this does tie into the darker color here, the darker color here, here. The red to the blast coming down to this translucent goldish color with some red overspray on top. It looks very blast. But then the face, more sculpt than I thought. It, from the promo pictures and, you know, just passing by. Again, I was not going to buy this, so I hadn't paid a lot of attention to it. But now that I am, I like all the little wrinkles and the, the grooves and the paint on the lips. There's even a little bit of shading under the eyes give it more depth. It's very, very otherworldly? You don't know where he's looking at any one time. That's just the MODOK design, and Hasbro has translated that into plastic form very, very nicely. I will say that the bare plastic of the arms and legs do kind of stand out against the body. There's some paintwork here, some paintwork here, some, you know, swirls catching your eye back here, but then you get to the limbs and they're just kind of plain, which I guess ties up to here too, but I'd like to see a dry brush of a lighter purple because you have these grooves and these bands and just little things all around. Just imagine a purple dry brush on top of that, bringing out the... Going over articulation. <laughs> yeah. There's no neck. There's no tilt. Ah! But at the shoulders, there is a hinge and swivel. You can go out. You can rotate up and out and around. Then there's a hinge and swivel at the elbow that comes up to... Oh, that's actually not bad. Well, 90, but not bad for this. And then that rotates. Swivel at the wrist. Hinge. Like we saw when we put it together, there's a ball joint at the hip. Goes around. Rotates. Goes wherever a ball can. Double knee, but the bottom seems to be stuck. And I've heard horror stories of people tearing that, so I'm not gonna... <laughs> so I'm not gonna push it as I'm pushing it. But at the same time... I'm not gonna have him walking or anything, you know? He's not standing. For me, Modoc's legs just hang down. Now, I'm not excusing that. I may heat that up later, try to break them free. But with both the right and the left sticking like that, I'll just leave it as is. Hinge at the ankle. Oh, come here, 2K. You're not running away from me. Hinge at the ankle goes back, goes forward, forward facing pin for rocker. Then on the chair, there seemed to be a ball joint at the top of this blast going up in there. There's not really a lot of movement. And then there's a ball joint on the control stick that gets that all around. For accessories, Modoc comes with two splayed out hands. Just yeah, those also pop out. And with that, you get a fist on the right and a trigger finger hand on the left for the control stick to go up in there. I didn't notice the button on top of the control stick till just now. There's also an alternate face plate, mouth open, kind of screaming, eyes a little bit wider. He's yelling at the minions. Does this come off? Oh, okay. You can swap it without taking it completely apart. Big honking peg on the back. But like an actual potato head, this isn't as easy as you think. You can store the extra face in the back and then pop it together. There's no place for it to stick in there, so if you get too rowdy with it, you're gonna shake it around. I like that there's a storage place for it. I can put this on the shelf and not have to keep up with that. Well, I guess you could put the hands in there too, huh? Extra hands put away. Size-wise, Modoc is a bit big. From the bottom of the blast to the top of his head, it is eight and three-eighths inches, which looks great next to the AIM Scientist Supreme and the AIM Trooper or Soldier, or whatever the technical term for that is, the cowboy with the beekeeper mask. Looks great next to the Marvel Legends 80th Anniversary Iron Man, or if you want to fit it into your Mezco collection, it's going to fit there because these are essentially the same size. Dedicated villain shelf with big brains, big heads. Just a big hunk of plastic, whatever shelf you want to put it on. But this is the big comparison, right? If you have the old MODOK, it's a question of whether you want to replace it. How much you like this. Because, honestly, both of them beside each other, there's something to love about both. But since most of my display at this point is Hasbro, I feel like this fits in better aesthetically. I'm not saying anything bad about, oh well, except he seems to be splitting right there. Look at all the different colors used. There's some bronze, some copper. There's a lot to love about the old one, but the new one, stylistically, I think I like it better. Plus it's heftier. And this could always be Modam. Mm -mm. <laughs> so at the end of the day, not the most action-packed action figure, but 
kind of essential, especially if you're bolstering your aim troops or your villain display. I kind of wish it had a straw hole in the top and you know, I'll say it again, I wasn't gonna get this. <laughs> and then fate brought it to me, or well, my hatred of paying shipping costs from anywhere. But even then, after I put my order in at Disney, this popped up, and in fact, it's still on the shelf at my local Target, so not that hard to get, which may be because of the price point. It is $50 for a hunk of plastic with some arms and legs. It does have some heft to it and it is a bit complicated, but since it had that $50 price point, I wish they had leaned into the potato head aspect a little bit more. A couple more swappable parts, maybe, oh man, I wonder how hard it would be to get some moving eyeballs on here. And now I can't get the face off. Plus, it's perfect timing with the Modoc show on Hulu going on right now. That's not even mentioning that how old is the Toy Biz one? This is available right now. If you missed out on that, ba boom, here's a Modoc for your shelf. If you enjoyed the review, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or just in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, Always catch you on the foosh. I also like the storage capability. It's nice that they thought of that. Of course, it was coming apart anyway, I guess. Hmm. I also can't decide which face I like better. I like a calm, brooding Modoc, but after watching a few episodes of the show, I also like him having a hissy fit. Just, no, no, I'm